Disney is here with their take on a Lucasfilm property that's not Star Wars. Today on Mark's Movie Reviews, it's Willow the Series. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another installment of Mark's Movie Reviews. It's been 10 years now since Disney bought Lucasfilm. Back in 2012, people said, okay, so owning Lucasfilm, Disney gets Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and anything else? And then finally, someone spoke up and said, Willow! Remember Willow? Lucasfilm's fondly remembered fantasy film from 1988. Back in the days of blogs, a friend of mine described it as, if Star Wars and Lord of the Rings had a baby, and that's a description that stuck with me ever since. In fact, the popular urban legend always was that George Lucas tried to get the movie rights to Lord of the Rings, but he couldn't, so he decided to do something Lord of the Rings-ish. Willow, sadly, didn't become as big as Star Wars and Indiana Jones, scuttling George Lucas's plans for a franchise. Lucas did take his outline for a franchise, gave it to legendary comic book writer Chris Claremont, and Claremont turned it into a trilogy of fantasy novels in the 1990s. But I'm getting off topic here. As everything old is new again, when Disney started looking at the Lucasfilm library, they stumbled across Willow and decided the time was right for a legacy sequel series. Warwick Davis returns as our young hero Willow, only now a middle-aged sorcerer, as he escorts a new generation of heroes on their journey. I managed to see the first three episodes. How does it fare? It's been some years since our heroes Willow, Mad Mardigan, and Sorsha saved the kingdom of Tiraslene. Willow returned to his people to become their High Unwin. Sorsha and Mad Mardigan had twin children, Will and Kit, who are just as adventurous as their father. Mad Mardigan has long since disappeared in search of a mystic weapon. The Chosen One, the infant Allure Danan, was put into hiding to further protect her. On the eve of Kit's arranged marriage, the evil forces of Nakmar attack the kingdom and kidnap Will. A rescue party heads out to find the great sorcerer Willow, whose magic will be needed for the rescue. Our party consists of Kit, her best friend and aspiring knight Jade, Graydon, Kit's betrothed who has come to prove his worth, Borman, Mad Mardigan's former squire, and Dove, a young chambermaid who is madly in love with Will. Along the way, friendships will be tested, destinies will be uncovered, and grand adventures will be had. So rather than everyone being British, like in most fantasy epics, we got quite a few characters here speaking in contemporary American accents, which really gives it a bit of a different feel. We got a greater use of contemporary music, and it doesn't take itself too seriously, giving itself a bit of a Princess Bride feel. We got some great casting as well. The young cast is just amazing. They're fun to watch, and they're growing into some compelling characters. And anchoring them all is Warwick Davis, back as Willow, and he's as good as he's ever been. When we compare this to more recent fantasy epics like House of the Dragon or Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, the mythology is a lot simpler thus making this whole universe feel more accessible. This isn't power struggles over the throne or the drama of the king's court. This is high adventure of a classic kind. While the mythology is somewhat simpler than the other fantasy epics out there, I did find myself getting a little bit lost. Definitely going to have to rewatch it to get a better sense of what's happening. I mean, it's a series, right? And all I saw were the first three episodes. My answers may be coming. Willow feels like a breath of fresh air when compared to the other fantasy epics out there. Finally, something that doesn't take itself so seriously, and it brings a sense of fun back to the proceedings. As we head into this holiday season, it's going to be a wonderful Christmas binge. On my patented nib scale, three out of four nibs. 